that are buying $1,200 shoes, stupid. You guys that are buying $200,000 cars, stupid. You guys that are spending money on homes, no offense, but you're stupid. You don't need an expensive house. You don't need a country club yet. What you need is paper. You need money, baby. You need net worth. You need passive income. You need flows, baby. Flows and flows and flows. You don't need a Rolls Royce. Welcome to Road to Billions Podcast, the mentality of an entrepreneur. With your host, Moise Bertrand. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is your host, Moise Bertrand, man. I had to change up the, the podcast a little bit. As you guys can see, shout out to Grant, um, Grant Cordon. I had to go ahead and put a little video in there. Um, it's really not a video, but it's an audio. But um, he was just explaining what I, what I tell you guys all the time. Like, you know, this podcast is really just... It's really just an eye opener. You feel me? This this whole podcast series I've been doing, I've been hearing myself. I've been talking to so many great people, so many successful men and women. And this is this is the mindset they have. Like that audio I put in the beginning of this podcast, that's literally the mindset. And um you just gotta find a loophole, you know? And you gotta see what works for you. So this podcast episode is gonna be like finding a loophole in success. So I know a lot of people may be like, Oh, he was talking about passive income. I know what he was talking about, <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is everything works different from ev- for everybody. Um, and what I mean by that is like a lot of people in our generation, I'm only speaking for um, from my point of view. This is not um, factual. This is opinion. This is opinions. And like I tell you guys, anytime you guys listen to my podcast, I'm just speaking from my point of view, you know. But what I look at life is I feel like social media caused a lot of instant gratification, instant, um, instant need to to be up where you want to be up at. And what do I mean by that? I mean, a lot of us, we all want to look rich. We all want to be rich. Shit, We all are rich. If we really think about it, we just have to get the money in, in person. But I feel like a lot of us fall victim. And this this happened to me in the past, too. So I had a bad way of just wanting to, wanting for everybody to know I was that guy, you know? So I'll always go to the mall, I'll spend money, and I'll buy jewelry, and I'll buy clothes, and I'll buy designer shoes, and I'll buy designer clothes, and I was spending so much money. Like, I was just spending so much money to a point where I look at it today, and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, why did I spend this amount of money on this? And I could have used this for this, but that's all knowledge that I gained over the years, and that's experience. So Grant Cardone isn't calling nobody stupid for real he just saying you have to make more um better decisions with your money you know we 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 as and i'm speaking to the black culture like specifically and if there's any other cultures that that listen to this you know shout out to you guys i'm not really um i'm not really talking about you guys i'm just talking about the black people in general we're 400 years behind you know i was reading a statistic a statistic um by Grant, um, not Grant Cordon, Don Peebles. Shout out to Don Peebles, real estate billionaire, developer, one of the best investors you will ever hear about. And see, he has a theory of just saying, like, money comes to those who actually go get it. Fuck waiting on it. So um, he he was talking about Earn Your Leisure, and he said it was $69.1 trillion, I believe, um, of private funding, and 98.7 is given to the white Americans to the white males and I was like what the hell like I'm like yo like what are we doing we are already back 400 years and now we can't even get the funding in order to do certain things to excel our lifestyle so what does that mean the way I look at life is a lot of us let's just say for the person who listens to this podcast they make 40 to 50 thousand a year some people who make 40 50 thousand a year are richer than the people who make six figures. I've seen it. I know people who are doing it, and it's just really just come down to your expenses per month. And I've seen people who's making 50 grand a year actually take themselves from 50 to 85 just based off of investments. And that 35 extra is literally taxable income that's, that that could be writ- written off their taxes because they have LLC and all other sorts. But what I'm trying to get down to is, like, a lot of us, we really want to look rich, right? We want to look rich. We want to feel rich. We want to feel good. And there's nothing wrong with that, you guys. There's nothing wrong with spending your money, hard-earned money, on things that you feel like are valuable to you and that could bring you joy. I'm not telling nobody how to spend their money whatsoever on this podcast. 
But if you guys do really know the podcast, you guys know I preach about passive income, about investments, about real estate, about trucking, about building businesses, about marketing, about just knowing certain things people don't know because you have to be that person who could show up for yourself whether or not you have a job or not. And a lot of us, not me, but a lot of people rely on earned income. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there is something wrong with that because Rick Ross says something very funny, but I kind of caught what he was saying. He said, a recession is when your neighbor loses his job, but the Great Depression is when you lose your job. So a lot of us are on the brink of not having any income of all if we lose our job. Like, think about if you lose your job, okay, you rely on your savings, okay, but then how long is that going to wear out? How long is that going to keep you afloat? So when I tell people constantly, I'm like, bro, listen, put your money in this, put your money in that. People look at me crazy because they up. They up at the minute, at the moment. But I'm like, we all up if we don't spend money on the things that could quadruple our money if you look at it. Like, if you really want to be honest, like, real hustlers, like me as a person, I'll bet my rent money, I'll bet everything in my account to build a business because I know that business is going to make quadruple the following month. I just know that. How I'm going to pay my rent for that month, I just got to hustle another way to get that bread. You feel me? But I'm looking at life like you have to be, you have to build sustainable investments, real estate, trucking. Um, what's another um, sustainable business that a lot of people really sleep on? Um, shit, to be real, I'm just looking at real estate and trucking. I don't want to start getting into too much into mental. But what I'm trying to explain to you guys, like a lot of us are, we're backed by social media validating what we buy, what we wear as success. And I feel like a lot of people fall into that victim mentality because, okay, you may have a Cartier, you may have a Rolex, you may have a Louis Vuitton, but you have to go back to work on Monday to make sure you sustain that lifestyle and you're busting your ass and you're mad as hell at your boss because he's overworking you. And you don't really have freedom like you say you do, or you don't have the freedom that you that you ought to have, that you want to have. And a lot of people may not understand like the way we all are evolving, but nowadays like inflation is taking over you can't be spending the same amount of money you did two three years ago and if you are it's okay i'm just telling you guys the best way to keep yourself afloat and keep yourself going up and and like i always talk about trajectory you have to just put your money in the right places i have a i have an episode about that putting your money in the right places i had even my um my dude pierre tuesday shout out to him he came out here and he talked to you guys about options like that was like a year ago you know, I don't do options trading. I know how to tr- I know how to trade options, but like I tell you guys, like everybody has a skill set and you have to be true to yourself. So, what works for you may not work for me. What works for me may not work for you. And that's what I'm saying, you have to find a loophole in success and see what works for you, but at the same time you have to keep that going. Like we all want to be really rich. We all want to be really wealthy, but there's certain sacrifices you have to just inevitably inevitably Ugh, inevitably, I have a tongue twister with that one. You just have to take, you know, you just got to take those risks. You just have to take that, um, and you just have to take that approach. Don't look at nothing like an L. Don't look at nothing like you're spending money and you just not going to get the money back. That's what a lot of us fall victim to. We give away $2,000 we put in the stock market. We watching the stock market every day. We watching it. We watching it. We watching it. We watching it. The money is not going to go nowhere. Like if you're expecting your money to go $45,000 in two months, hey, go do something else, you know. But I'm not telling you guys success is fast. All I'm telling you is like success is not linear, but it does keep going up depending on how much effort you put in and how much investments you are into. And I try to tell people every time, like, I'm not perfect. I'm not coming on this podcast saying I'm I'm a guru or anything like that. If anything, I'm always talking to you guys like I will be talking to myself as as someone who's having a um, conversation, like I have conversations with myself, walking in the park, people look at me. I'm like, what you looking at, man? I'm having a real conversation with, with the group, you know, me, myself, and I. So when I tell myself I could wait a little longer to get this, I could wait a little longer. I don't have to buy that. I don't need that. Like, man, I had so many times in my in my life where I bought something and I looked at the reason I bought it and I'm like, why the hell did I buy this? You know, I know we all had moments where we bought something. It was like, why the hell did we buy this? Like, I could have bought something else with this. I could have used this for something else. And it's worse when you know you weren't supposed to buy it. 
you know, you know how you told yourself, I'm not going to buy it. You end up buying it. You like, you feel kind of bad because you know your intentions wasn't to buy it really. It was to really just take the whole instant gratification and be like, oh, let me just go get it because I got it. But you don't have to spend money because you got it, you know? And I think a lot of people fall victim to, oh, I got it. I'm going to make it back. I'm going to get that check next week. I'm going to get that bag next month. I, but you don't want to rely on any future investments. You don't want to rely on, rely on anything, to be honest. You have to keep yourself focused on how many investments are you into? You know, how much are you going to be making back from your investments? And we all are creatures of habit. We all are people who want to be great in all of our ways. We all are great in each of our ways, to be honest. But what what hinders a lot of us is we're looking for others to validate our success. We're looking for others to tell us, man, you look rich, you clean, man. Bro, I'm telling you, a lot of guys, man, and girls I see on Instagram, you guys be clean as hell. And I asked a dude who was very much into fashion. I'm like, bro, how much your outfit cost? Bro, bro told me $100. And bro was one of the cleanest people in the party. And I'm looking over to the, I'm looking over to the left-hand side, and there's a dude who got the whole drip on, right? I'm talking about fashion designer, everything you could think of, like the nice watch, the Gucci belt, the Balmain jeans, the Gucci shoes, and I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> okay, okay, this is what we're doing, but I'm not telling nobody how to spend their money. I'm not telling nobody how to look. I'm just telling you guys, I just want you guys to be the best version of yourself without a job, without having to rely on somebody else to give you a check, without you having to rely on that direct deposit to hit your account every two weeks or every week. It doesn't have to feel like you slave by a business or a corporation because you have to keep going back. Yeah, the salary is good, but what's better, your mindset, your lifestyle, or somebody telling you what to do every day, somebody telling you that you got to come to work, and if you don't come to work, you, you're going to lose your job, and that leads into you losing your house and your car and everything that's trickled down into, like, trouble. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, like, keep focus, keep God first, man. Don't worry about everything else going on out here. I'm trying to preach to you guys. Don't worry about this shit. Don't worry about social media. Social media is a fake ass, fake ass, like, that shit fake. Because I know a lot of people who are supposed to be great people and they're out here scamming and drug dealing, doing bullshit, not because that's what they want to do. It's because that's what the image allows them to do. Like, they continuously grow in that image and that fast money. And I'm not someone who's going to tell you guys how to live life. I'm not someone to tell you guys, like, I'm perfect. I'm not going to tell you guys how to stop. I'm not going to tell you guys stop doing one thing in order to herp, herp and jump another thing. All I'm telling you guys, like, we all are creatures of habit. And a habit is habitual. And if you tell, if you tell yourself, I'm going to save money for the next 90 or 120 days, that's four months. You could do that. I believe you guys could do that. But... We may not have the discipline to do that because we're so eager to go buy something to make sh make sure we feel validated in our hard work. And I'm not telling you guys, like I reiterate this five times, hard work is not a reflection of what you look like, of how far you came. It's about what your mindset is because I could work hard and I can never move up in life, you know? But if I'm working hard and I know I have a vision, I have a goal to where I want to be at, I know I have to put away 10000 in order to buy something, I'm not going to think about it being hard work. I'm just going to think about it being a goal-oriented thing, you know, and that's an investment that's going to pay me back and let alone probably take care of me the next few years of my life. You know, think about it, guys. Would you guys rather earn 50000 in passive income per year or would you guys want to earn 100000 in the earned salary? A lot of people might take the 100K, but the 50K guy, he's earning that regardless. That 50K, he's he's away from 100K. All he has to do is save up four or five months, and he's back at 100K because all he has to do is put in an investment that's going to probably has a 20% a return over the next two, three years, you know, four or five years. That's 100K right there. And that's one investment. That's not even if he puts away eight months of saved passive income to double his investments. Now he's at 100K just like you, and you busting your ass every day. You busting your ass every day going to work, and you hate your job, you hate your lifestyle. Well, you love your lifestyle, but you hate your job, but you can't you can't quit the job because the lifestyle relies on the job. But I know people who's traveling the world as we speak right now who doesn't have one lick of designer, who doesn't have one lick of any type of crazy um, 
designing designer uh, brand. And like I said, everybody spends their money differently. But what I'm looking at, the real rich folks, the really ri- the really rich folks, they're not showing up rich. They're not showing up looking rich. They're not showing up looking like the like like the richest person in the room. You know, we all look at rappers and stuff. We're like, man, he got money. Those are advances. Those are deals that if you don't do what you got to do, now you forever stuck with this label. You can never earn how you want to earn for real because you still got to pay us back, you know? So being independent, man, like controlling yourself, controlling your lifestyle, controlling how you live life, designing your lifestyle, custom design lifestyle built just for you, designed just built for you, you have to build that. No one's going to give you that lifestyle. We are blessed. We are blessed to just have a have a job come in there, um, have a job. We are blessed with having income. We are blessed with having passive income. But what's going to separate the millionaires from the hundred thousandaires and the billionaires from the millionaires? It's all about discipline. It's about sacrifices. Like you can have forty thousand in your account, and you might think you're rich than everybody, but that forty thousand is just sitting there. And then you got a dude who had five thousand. Then his five thousand turns to ten thousand. He took that five again. He made another 10. Now he got, you know, he started compounding his stuff. Now he's just up 40, just like you, off 5,000. How do I know? Because I because I do this. Like, I know how to quadruple. I know how to tell people, listen, bro, like, you got to put this money in this place here, 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 here. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not. That's a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a um, stockbroker. I'm not, I'm not nobody you should take advice from. I'm just doing it. You know, you guys see my Instagram. I'm just doing it. I'm showing up. I don't really tell people what I'm doing. I just show the fuck up and I show out. But what I'm trying to tell you is like I'm building a sustainable investment lifestyle in order for my lifestyle to be to be catered by my passive income. I don't want to work a job. I told you guys my last job was 2018, man. Like I hated working, bro. Like me working felt like slavery. And I'm not trying to be funny, man. I know everybody who. If you haven't had a business, you just have to know that a business is only ran based on your hard work, based on how much you want to put the work in. And a lot of people don't want to put the work in because they want something that's given to them. They want something that's already a built-in system, which isn't a problem because you could take that same money and go build your business later on that night over the next few days, weeks, X, Y, Z. But what I really want you guys to understand is like we all are capable of being millionaires, billionaires in the next five, ten years. Shit, two years, two, three years, depending on how much investments you have going on, depending on how bad do you want it. We all are capable of it, you guys. Like we really are, we really are capable of it. So what I'm letting you guys know is that we are we all have a problem with us, right? And the problem I feel like we're letting social media dictate how we live life. You know, we let the comparison of happiness be the, be the thief you know the comparison of lives is a thief of joy and we're and we're letting this get to us and i'm telling you guys straight up like i know a lot of people they they say man you're not the one to talk about this like you know stop i'm just telling you guys from my opinion i feel like we are as a black culture i feel like we kind of let ourselves um fall victim to this one to show up as the cleanest the richest the the looking the richest however you guys want to say it when there's really other coaches out here who have a plain white t-shirt khaki pants and some timberland um boats shoes on you guys know what i'm talking about the one with the strings i hate those shoes by the way um and they're up they're up mills they're up they're up i'm talking about up when when i say up i'm talking about up and i had to come to atlanta to really see this because we all want to be great we all want to be successful and we will be but I need you guys to really take this lesson, man. Fuck what everybody else is doing. Fuck what he got going on. Fuck what she got going on. I don't care if he got a new car two, three months ago. You don't even know if he could pay that shit. I don't care if he just got a fucking designer belt. You don't know if he saved up for that shit. You know? But there's people who could easily just go say, I'm going to go buy this damn Mercedes AMG and spend 100000 liquid on it. Because I could do that because I saved up. My passive, my passive investments are taking care of me. My lifestyle, my net worth is just, is worth more than this car, but I'm just going to go ahead and spend this money on this car because I could do that. I could do that like easily. I don't have to trip. 
And some people could do that. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, like, it's okay to be in our 20s and still stay down. It's okay not to go to parties. It's okay not to spend all your money on jewelry and all this. Take trips, man. Experience life. Meet others. Be real with yourself and, and build your network. Like, your network is going to obviously become your net worth. So around me, I only keep I only keep rich niggas around me, rich people around me. I don't even bullshit, you guys. Like, the people I talk to on a constant basis, they're either doing the same thing I'm doing or even better. I'm going to keep it a butt with you. Like, all my friends, like, who I talk to every day, they, they know who they are. Bro, you guys are doing a hell of a job, man. And that's why I try to tell people, like, it's okay to switch circles. It's okay to have a different mindset towards money. But what I'm telling you guys, like, say, for example, you're 20 right now, and you invest, you sacrifice five years, and you're a nurse, right, of just investing. Boom, 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 boom. You invest twice a year into whatever business you're investing in. By 25, you should have an M or close to a net worth of an M. That's five years. That's that's real. That's real investing. Like, that's real deal. That's real. Like, that's just, that's, that's, that's possible. <laughs> How do I know? I know people who are now 22 who's up a million dollars, $2 million in liquid cash, and they started when they was 18, 17. That's five years. So five years, I'm not going to say it's the golden number, but five years is usually what we use to, oh, we're going to hold this real estate property for five years and we're going to sell it after five years. That's usually a golden number. A lot of people want to stick around. You know, five years is like a golden number. I don't know why there's people just because five years. But five years is what I look at. What I look at, a lot of people have been staying down for five years, and that's when they usually blow up in that year five. You know, so what I'm just trying to preach to you guys, like, I love you guys. I really do appreciate you guys working hard and busting on ass every day. But we have to get to a point where we we back 400 years, bro. So the only way we're going to be able to get back up in the top ranks and the top wealth of generations of this pyramid that we we are in, that, you know, you have different cultures who's supposedly supposed to be above us, but we're the ones that creating the wave. We can't let shit like this slide. We got to be able to tell ourselves, listen, bro, let's all put our money together. Let's go build a headquarters. And then we're employing a hundred of us. Now we got the, now we got the wealth gap catching up, but they don't want us to know that. Like you guys have to really sit down and be real with yourself. Like you guys could have 10, 20,000 in your account, but if you're not investing it, if you're not investing it, I'm looking at it like you don't got no money because if the bank shut down, if something happened with cybersecurity, that 20 grand is gone. You asked out. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, like, you don't guys don't you guys don't have to listen to me. You guys don't have to tell like, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. He's not no fucking like I'm just 24 doing it, bro. Like I've been telling you guys for the minute. When I do take over and just like whatever I do, I'm going to make sure like I listen back to my old podcast and episodes to realize like I only spoke to you guys about the shit I'm doing and that I'm going to do. You know, when I tell myself I'm a billionaire, I am a billionaire. Like I know this is coming. How? I don't know yet. But when? I don't know yet. But the journey is what is what's beautiful in it. So. Guys, take time to like really dive into like if you're not doing stocks, get into real estate. If you're not doing real estate, get into trucking. If you're not doing trucking, sell Amazon warehouse drop shipping. Like do something that's going to help you take yourself to the next level in life. Whether whether or not you believe it or not, I believe everybody who listens to this podcast have the capabilities, you guys, to just go up and never come down. I believe it. I want you guys to really understand it. And whatever happens in life, just know that if you put in your best foot forward, nothing or nobody can stop your success. All right. Pretty guys always find abundance. And with that being said, the Roll the Blends podcast, man, has been an amazing journey. Keep chasing your dreams. And for everybody who's hating on you, just tell them two words. Fuck you. <laughs>